Elifel at Remington made rifle barrels. That's what he did. He didn't make shotgun barrels. It took a while for the Remington Arms Company, uh, long since it passed out of the Remington family, to get into the shotgun business. And the first Remington shotguns were built on Whitmore patents starting in 1874. Uh, these were hammer guns, double guns. And the Remington side-by-side -side shotguns continued to be refined, uh, to be a little more efficient to produce. And by 1900, Remington had pretty much given up on the double shotgun. And that's because, of course, there was the better mousetrap. And that appeared in the form of the John Moses Browning design, uh, Remington autoloading shotgun. When I think of Remington as a shotgun maker, I think of a company that's had a, obviously a tremendous impact. Remington uh, has identified designs and design characteristics in shotguns that I think were, for their time, innovative. Remington didn't always do the innovating, but Remington was seemingly able to identify innovations and trends that, that it believed were significant and then either get the rights to a design or refine that design internally. In the early 20th century, Winchester came in with a hammerless pump shotgun, the Model 12, that took over that market in the first half of the 20th century. It was favored by hunters, by competition shooters, uh, law enforcement, military, all used this uh, very effective Winchester Model 12 repeater. And uh, in only 52 years, the Winchester Model 12 sold 2 million copies. Now, Remington had some repeating shotguns. They had a, a Model 10, uh, they had a Model uh, 17 that followed a couple years later. It was a combination of a, uh, a basic Browning design as improved by Pedersen. And uh, then a Model 29, Model 31 pumps came along. They were both moderately successful. But all the Remington pump shotguns were lagging significantly behind the Winchester Model 12. So after World War II, Remington uh, got together and they wanted to come up with a pump action shotgun that would uh, give all the advantages of the Model 12 Winchester, uh, but could be made more affordably uh, and in a, a very, very reliable shotgun. And they came up with what was to become America's favorite shotgun, the Remington Model 870. The thing that the Remington Model 870 had going for it was, first of all, excellent lines. The aesthetics of the 870 are outstanding. But it, it was a good design. And what's interesting is they were able to, to, as part of a larger plan for commonality of parts within the, the, the Remington company, they were able to have some efficiencies in, in, in how springs and triggers and sears and all, all so, that sort of thing work together. And the, the good news about the 870 is even though it was easier to make than a Model 31, it was still a fabulous shotgun. And there have been literally hundreds and hundreds of variants. New variants are introduced almost every year of the Model 870. But the thing about the 870 is it is extremely reliable and it is a, a really a, a gun that has withstood the test of time because here we are 66 years after introduction and they are still selling as many 870s as they can make. Want to know what's happening at American Rifleman? Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. We'll be right back. When I think of Remington as a shotgun maker, I think of a company that's had a, obviously a tremendous impact. Remington, beginning with the Model 31 in 1931, identified designs and design characteristics in shotguns that I think were, for their time, innovative. Even with the 870, a gun we don't take today as a, as a significantly innovative gun, but it did. It had innovations such as the dual action bars, which uh, gave even more reliability perhaps than some of the other designs, certainly allowed for a design that was more easily manufacturable without super high tolerances and hand fitting, 
that once it was put together exhibited a great degree of reliability. So Remington continued to pursue uh, auto-loading shotguns and pump-action shotguns. They really had it down with the Remington Model 11. This is the, the recoil-operated uh, gun designed by the master, by John Moses Browning. But the lines of the Model 11 were really from another age. In the post-World War II era, uh, Remington brought out the Model 48. And really, all they did was just shave off the hump and change the lines of the gun. It was the same basic operating system. There were also sportsman versions. Uh, apparently, uh, it's a good idea under federal migratory law to only put three rounds in a shotgun. And so you had the sportsman series of the 1148. But Remington continued to try and refine the concept, and that's what leads us to the model 1158. With the model 1158, you have Remington's first gas-operated shotgun. And in that, that era of, of the 1950s, the first company to crack the code on making a semi-automatic shotgun with gas operation that was somewhat reliable was high standard. Then Remington came in with the model 1158. And they worked fairly well, but it really wasn't until the model 1100 that Remington got it right when it came to gas operated shotguns. Now, of course, when I started hunting, the Remington 870 and the Remington 1100 were you know, they were the most popular shotguns in the world, and if you look at the numbers of them that have been made, more than 10 million 870s, more than 4 million 1100s, they still are. But one thing that I think is pretty neat is when you trace from them to the Remington shotguns that are, are the newest models today, the Versamax and the V3, and you can see kind of uh, how the development or how the evolution of those shotguns have gone. I was up at the Remington plant in Ilion, New York within the last year where all four of those different models are made. They all still have steel receivers, uh, no aluminum in those guns at all. They're made just as tough and as strong today as the uh, 870 was back in the early 1950s when it came out. And, and while the, the newer guns, the Versamax and the V3, have a lot of innovation to them, the one thing that, that they've all got going for them is the durability and the reliability that you can really count on them when you're out in the field. We're here at Ilion, New York at the Remington factory. We're here with Mike LeMay. Mike is a senior design engineer. He's worked on the new V3 project. And Mike, tell us a little bit, I know you, you know, obviously, you're well aware of the 870, the 1100, the Versa Max. You've probably had a hand in, in working on a lot of those projects. What is it about the V3 that you guys wanted to try to accomplish? When we set out designing the V3, we wanted to get a, a lightweight, reliable, mid-price point gun for the customer. So this gun comes in at 7.2 pounds. It's one of your lightest recoil guns for that weight in its class. And with the Versa Port system, we've been able to have uh, a great deal of reliability on this gun. Mike, tell me about how this gun is designed with regard to the recoil springs and where they're located and the gas system and how, how it works. Sure. Recoil system, we have two action springs and guide rods right in the receiver, which is unusual for most gas-operated shotguns. It's going to be in the stock. Right. You know, we also have the supercell pad on. The, the, those two things combined allow us to reduce the recoil on this lightweight gun. The other thing we have is some compensation plugs. That's a little different from the Versamax. Again, the heavier the round, the more that's going to vent gas. That's going to allow you to increase the reliability of the firearm in terms of endurance. And of course, people can't see it, but right here in the chamber area, under the gas block area, before it's uh, attached to the barrel, the ports that are helping to control gas are wire EDM'd into the barrel itself. Yeah, there's eight holes in there, and half of those are gonna be covered up on a three-inch round. They'll all be open on a two and three-quarter. So overall, how would, you, how would you make this gun fit into the, the range of Remington shotguns? You know, you got the, the Stalwart 870. I mean, it'll, it'll cycle under any circumstances. And then the Versamax. The V3 the, was the idea, just a lighter gun that was and, and less expensive that was still easy yes, to shoot? That was the main idea, was to give uh, the customer more of a mid-price point gun 
that had the reliability of Versamax but was lighter weight. Now, this yeah. gun's almost a full pound lighter than the Versamax, and it's still very soft shooting for the, the weight class that it's in. Right.